Hey guys, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and uh, it is now March, which is officially uh, Mini Zine March. <laughs> and this is just like a, a celebration of Mini Zines that is officially, I don't know if run is exactly the right word, but like it was sort of uh, conceived by Nix at Sea Green Zines, and uh, there are, sometimes are official prompts sometimes aren't uh this year there aren't so it's just kind of like a big month to make mini zines to share mini zines to talk about mini zines and just to give some love to the smaller zines in the world uh nix defines mini zines as anything that is less than it's like quarter size or smaller um which is like quarter size of a letter or a4 piece of paper I, to me personally, <laughs> a mini zine will always be the kind that is um, folded up out of a single piece of paper, and you'll see exactly what I mean in a sec here. Um, actually, you know, there's no reason I can't just show you right now. Let me just pull out. Hang on. Okay, <laughs> so for those who don't know, this is um, what I generally consider to be a mini zine, and it's sort of your um, typical mini zine. Uh, this is just like a piece of paper that I use for uh, testing out markers and doodling and stuff, so ignore the content. But the shape of it <laughs> is mini zine. So how it works is that um, it's like a single piece of paper that's folded up so that you have eight pages total with the cover. Jesus Christ! Sneezing fit. Okay. Okay. Cover. <laughs> Cover. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Why did I start at one? Okay, hang on. I'm fucking, I'm starting this over. I'm not following my own rule here of including the cover as page one. Cover. Wait, hang on. <laughs> I, just, I fucking did it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight page mini zine, and it's folded out of a single sheet of paper. Uh, and so there's like this folding technique where you uh, cut this slit in the middle, you fold it into eighths, and you push it together like a big, like a big star. How did I fold this? So anyway, this is what I generally consider to be a mini zine, and there's also sort of variations where you can use a larger piece of paper and fold it to the same size to get more pages, or, you know, fold things to this size and, and staple it together and, you know, get get more pages out of it, but like, generally, I think this this is what I would call a mini zine. Uh, this is sort of your, your standard eight-page mini zine, and that's kind of what I'm going to be mostly focusing on, although I'll, I'll, I'll probably have a couple other ones. Okay, the point of all that was just to give like a little definition preamble, and what I'm gonna do right now is just share some mini zines that are kind of particularly special to me, that have sort of a special place in my heart that are, are uh, what's the word? Sentimental to me. <laughs> um, I really want to try and get some more videos and, and make some more things about like free mini zines and um, some of the other mini zines in my collection. Uh, but you know what? I'm just going to start with the basics and just the mini zines that I would be really remiss if I didn't talk about at some point during this month. We're going to start with those. So um, let's start with this one. Okay. So this mini zine is the first mini zine that I ever saw and knew, like, before I even knew what a mini zine was and before I really knew what a zine, well, no, I knew what zines were, but, like, before I'd really seen them out in the wild, you know what I mean? And that is Lizard People, Dear Reader, a DIY guide to searching for weird shit. And this is a little mini zine that was made by Julia F. of Crap Pandemic, who um, I now, I sell some of my zines via Crap Pandemic, and I've talked to Julia a bunch, and they're super awesome, and I've read all, like, well, I'm, probably not all of their zines, but I've read a, a ton of their zines now, and have a ton of their zines, and really love it. But this is like, I saw this zine on Tumblr, like, many years before I actually knew anything about Julia F., or had really gotten involved in the zine scene and the zine community, and I remember I, uh, I bought this, 
I bought a copy, and it was like a dollar. That's the other nice thing about zines, is they're so cheap. Uh, zines in general, I think, should be cheap, but mini zines especially. Uh, I got on a tangent. Basically, like, um, a friend of mine from middle school was kind of having a rough time, and so for his birthday, I made a little package, and uh, he's super into cryptids, and so I had included this. And then, kind of as soon as I put it in the package, I was like, or, you know, as soon as I sent the package, it was like, I was really happy for him to have it, but I was also like, damn it, I should have, like, I should have written down the title or, or the author or something and, like, bought another copy for me. What am I doing? I'm never gonna see the scene again. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then eventually when I had connected with Julia F. in sort of a separate uh, instance, I was like, wait a second, wait a second, this is your zine! <laughs> and I was super excited, and so I got another copy, and now I have, I think I have two copies now, just just in case. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, so, okay. The zine is basically about, about cryptids and cryptid hunting, and it's super, it's super goofy, like, Belief isn't mandatory, but the truth is out there. Let's go find them. And they're talking about UFOs and cryptozoology, and it's just, and like, things to bring for evidence, where to look, what to do. And it's so, it's so cute. They've got, like, this big list on the back. Uh, here, I'll just read this list. So you want to go find some weird shit. Rule one, just do it. Two, pay close attention. Three, document everything. 3.1, document everything. 3B, document everything. 3.5, document everything. 4, be safe. 5, be quiet. 6, be nice to the planet. <laughs> Keep it creepy, Julia F. <laughs> so it's fabulous. And let me say, like, the best thing about, about the scene, and I almost don't want to, like, ruin the surprise if you do end up getting this for yourself, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's just so cool. So I guess spoiler alert, can I say that? Ba, 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 ba. There's a big map <laughs> of a whole bunch of different like cryptids and creepy shit across the United States. And you know what? I don't know if I've even really looked at this since like looked thoroughly at this map since I moved to Massachusetts because I do not know what this puckwudgie is. But I gotta look that up. <laughs> yeah, I love this one. Sasquatch are like Starbucks. They're everywhere. Um, and they've included this little sticker that says, Don't Stop Believing. And it's just... It's fabulous. So, this one is special to me because it was kind of like one of the first scenes that I ever saw. And it was also like my first kind of tether, I guess, to the real zine community. Like, you know... I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, you know, it's just very special to me. And then since then, I've read a lot more of Julia F. zines, and every single zine that they make is fabulous, but for some reason their mini zines in particular are really good. This one does not fall into the category of the eight-page folded mini zine that I was talking about earlier, but I think it's mini enough that it kind of, it's good enough for me. It's called Don't Piss Down My Back and Tell Me It's Raining. Julia F. always comes up with, like, the greatest titles and the coolest things and just the collaging and the text is so it's so good and it's so goth and it's so old school and I love it every time and this one is like every single zine is so real and so deep and it manages to have this cool like okay here's like here's like why it's cool is that um it talks about deep stuff and it really gets at the at the shitty parts of deep stuff but it doesn't leave you you know just empty does that make any sense like sometimes when you're when you're talking about deep stuff or thinking about deep stuff it's just exhausting it's just like i don't want to think about right now but every time that i see one of julia's zines it's like it's validating and it's like talking to a friend about it and it's not like reading about depression or whatever it's like i don't know it's it feels very personal in that way it's like it's a personal persine there you go i probably could have picked like 
any of the these sort of size mini zines from Julia, but I chose this one just because it is so accurate and so tragic, I guess. And I'll just read the first line because I think that sums up the entire thing very well. Finding out your former high school BFF is a Nazi now is the surprise emotional equivalent of somebody taking a massive runny shit down the back of your neck. It's like, yep, pretty much. <laughs> and it's... And so it kind of goes on a little bit more about sort of the history, I guess, of the relationship with this former best friend and different you know, I don't know. And just, there's like these, these little letters written in like, dear Carrie, what the fuck are you doing? We always said we'd be better than this. Uh, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read the entire thing, but yeah, like really every one of Julia's zines is super special to me. And also because I feel like Julia was one of the first zine friends that I made or like zine people. You will, you will not be surprised that a lot of these scenes that are sentimental to me are sentimental because they were made by friends or people that I've connected with uh, through zines. So anyway, uh, here's another one that was really special to me. Uh, it's called The DIY Guide to Making Your Own Tux Dress. And this was another thing that I saw on Tumblr, and it was made by a... Uh, like junior in high school who was going to their first prom and decided to make a tux dress, uh, which is basically this. Um, <laughs> it's half dress, half tux, and it's this fabulous queer non-binary uh, expression of it's like this 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 take on on formal wear that's not hyper gen. You know, it's, it's okay. It's playing with the hyper gendered formal wear that we see. And so this is really, this literally is just like a DIY guide about here's what you need to do. Uh, here's where you can get them. Here's how you put it together. And what, like, this one was special just because, again, it was like a surprise. It was this thing that I just saw. It was rather early on. Let me see if, does it say when this was made? I guess, presumably, <laughs> at least in 2019. But yeah, I guess I just like, I just really like it. Who can wear a tux dress? Anyone. I did not create the tux dress as a gender fluid outfit. Its purpose was to be able to express my gender fluidity in a formal setting, but anyone of any gender can wear this look. I just really, yeah, yeah, deconstruct gender, gendered bullshit and I uh, just... Yeah, it's just really, it's really special to me, and it it just made me happy to see that people are out there making this, because at the time, the uh, creator had not made any other zines, had never sold anything online, or made, or traded zines before, and just made this because people were asking how they made their look, and I just think it was so cool that they decided to, exp the, to share this information in, in this form of of zine. And I, you know, I just, I really like that a lot. And <laughs> I don't even know if this zine sort of, if the zine still exists or if they're still on this Tumblr account. Uh, I'll try to look it up and put it in the description, but yeah, like this is just really special because it feels like kind of like an outsider zine, if that makes sense. Like <laughs> it's so funny. Like doesn't out, isn't, You've heard of, like, outsider art, which is, you know, art that's made by people who aren't, you know, classically trained artists or professional artists. And then you have, like, you know, zines are already outsider art, so then what, what is an outsider zine? Is it made by someone who doesn't usually make zines? And does that count as, like, who's really on the outside? I don't know. I'm, I'm rambling. But, yeah, it's special because it feels like, you know, this person said... I have something to share. I have some important information that I think will benefit people. And I'm just going to make a quick zine about it to share that information. And now it exists in the world. And that just feels very what, you know, what I like about zines. So that's another special one. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so I have a couple of mini zines from uh, Jam Dotri who uh, I connected with them via Etsy when I was still on Etsy and basically reached out, saw their zines and reached out and said, hey, like, would you want to do a trade? And it was fabulous and we, we had a great time and we're, we sort of have similar tastes, I guess. Um, and I guess what what made this really special was that this was the first time that I had ever tried to reach out to someone on Etsy personally for the sake of trading and, and trying to, uh, like, there's sort of this hump where I had to, I had to figure out that, yeah, you know, zine, zine people on Etsy are, are just zinesters like anyone else. And I guess, okay, well, it wasn't the first time. It was kind of like the second or third time where I had reached out to a couple of other zinesters on Etsy asking if they'd be interested in a trade. And of course I was super nice. Uh, you know, I tried to be super nice and I said, like, if you don't want to, I totally understand. You know, not everyone is in the position to be able to afford a trade or really not everyone would be interested in my zines to want to trade at all. And, um, so it's like, I understand that, but it also just kind of hurts still when someone says, no, I don't want to trade. And the responses that I had gotten were a little bit, um, I don't know if gruff is exactly the right word, but like a little bit dismissive. And it just felt like, wait, you know, I thought that, I thought that sort of zine culture was about trading and, and anti-capitalism and all this stuff. And now, you know, I guess Etsy just feels very like the antithesis of that. And so I was feeling kind of discouraged and just... I didn't like it. Uh, and I totally respect their decision not to trade. And I, I even respect the way in which they said it. It was like, you can say, you, you know, I really tried not to come across as like begging for a zine or anything, but you know, so I respect that. Yes, you are absolutely, it's, you are completely justified in setting your own boundaries, however you wish to do it. I guess it just felt a little bit like when you're like a little kid and you're going up and you're trying to show something that you're excited about to your older sibling. I mean, I was the oldest, so, you know, for me it was more like a, just an older kid or something, but you try to go up and show something that they're really excited about. And they're just like, you know, leave me alone, go away. And I know it's not the same. Okay. I, I know that like, and I also know that, you know, I sometimes have a hard time uh, reading tone over text. I'm sure everybody does. And, um, I, I tend to, uh, assume the worst isn't exactly the right word, but like, I feel, I, I, for me growing up, part of my survival was being able to figure out, um, the slightest hint of anybody being mad so that I could avoid it. So <laughs> obviously like, it's, it's a personal thing that, you know, that sort of hurt my feelings, but, uh, or, or just made me, made me nervous, made me uncomfortable, whatever. It's entirely not their fault. Uh, the, the zinesters who didn't want to trade, but you know, this one was special because I was like so close to giving up and so close to just retreating and being like, I, maybe I should just not talk to anybody and not try to make trades ever again. And this is before I had set up other avenues to do it. So I kind of was like acting as though Etsy or in person were the only options, which is not true, but you know, <laughs> it was, it was just a long, you know, it was hard, I guess I'll, I'll put it that way. And so this just felt very special in like, somebody who was just as excited to trade as I was and seems to have a similar ethos, uh, to zines and zine making and art making. And it just made me really happy. And so I'm very happy to have made this connection and all of the zines that I got from jam are very special. And I talked a whole bunch and didn't actually show off very much of the zine, <laughs> but basically this is called alley slices and they're little drawings, little ink drawings of, um, alleys and places in Chicago or the, like the Chicago area where Jam lives. And there's also more on the inside, a nice big one, which is always super fun. And I really like, well, you know, it's, it's a, it's sort of a different paneled, paneled setup. 
and I really like urban urban illustration and sort of finding the finding the beauty and finding the just interest, I guess, in like these layers of of urban um spaces. So that was really special. Um, here's like another one that I just have kind of a quick story and I can't really show too much of this one, but it's, uh, called Shua, Shua Zine, like created by Joshua Ryan. So Shua, like was short for Joshua. And, um, this is really sweet because this is the first zine that Joshua had ever made. And, uh, they came up to me at the first zine fest that I had ever hosted and gave me this zine. Just, just like, here, can I give you a copy of my zine? It's like, yeah, yeah, you can, of course you can give me a copy of your zine. And this is the first zine. Like, thank you for checking out my first zine. I'm an artist from Massachusetts. And it just is like, has these cool little, little art pieces and, it's just, it was so sweet to be like, oh my god, I get to participate in the, in the building of community for this very new zine store. And of course I gave some of my zines as well, but it just was like, it just felt really special. And I'm trying to see, okay, this one's pretty good. Uh, like I, the, there's just some nudity and stuff that I'm just not, you know, sure. <laughs> and I just think it's really, I don't know. It's just really intriguing and interesting. And uh, like this says, I prefer humans to Christ, wet skin to dry, uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And it's just like, I don't know. Isn't this just like the coolest shit ever? And it's like, this is the first zine that they ever made. And I just, I just am so like honored that I was able to be part of the first print run of the first zine of this, you know, new zine stir in Massachusetts and that I got to do this in person and it was just so sweet. And I didn't really get to talk to Joshua very much. I think that they were a little bit shy um, in, you know, just wanting to run up hand and zine and, and run off. And I totally know what that is like of like, here, take my zine. Bye. Um, I've got some stories about that, but I don't, anyway. Uh, yeah. So this is just very, very special to me. I really like this one. And I guess while we're on the uh, Zine Fest topic, I have another one that is special from uh, the Watertown Zine Fest. This is from the second year. And this is a zine that I saw first on itch, itch.io. Itch and it's made by uh, Ezra Rose, who um, I was very happy to connect with. And basically, like, as soon as I saw this mini zine, I knew, you know, I, I was... Um, tasked with looking for potential speakers at the, uh, zine event, like just people to run talks or, or activities or whatever. And I was like, as soon as I saw this, I was like, holy shit, we have to have, we have to get Ezra. We have to get Ezra. <laughs> um, Ezra, they're, uh, also from Massachusetts, uh, sort of more central mass, but yeah, it just, it's just really special. So this, the Z, okay. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm losing it. Cause I'm just mesmerized, I guess. But this scene is called we are magic sigils for trans power. And it's made by Ezra Rose and it's for free download on itch.io, which is just fabulous and an honor that they have made this available. So, um, they're basically these little sigils that are inspired by Solomonic seals uh, aesthetically inspired anyway. And, um, they're made up of these phrases for trans, trans magic, trans power, trans acceptance, trans beauty. I really love it. And so it's like the, each of the phrases was sort of deconstructed and then used to reconstruct this, this sigil. So the phrase I'm, I'm happily going to be able to share and read off all of them since it's available free online. I transform and transcend I complicate and beautify. I mold my body to heal my mind. I shape my heart beyond the bounds of flesh. I exist beyond legibility. 
My form is flawless. You're magic and you matter. Yeah, just a really stunningly beautiful little mini zine. So you should absolutely download it, throw Ezra a tip if you can afford it, print this, hang it on your wall, like photocopy these sigils and, and make keep, keep them close to you. Like it's just really special, really powerful. And we did end up having Ezra as one of our speakers. And I think that it works pretty well. And I really am looking forward to the day when we're able to meet in person. And it was, it was kind of, it was really nice that, you know, through connecting via the zine fest, we ended up sending each other some holiday presents and, um, we've been talking more and the Ezra has some really fantastic zines that I seriously think are like required reading for anybody in the, um, you know, anyone with occult interests, anyone, uh, any tarot reader, like they're, I'll have to get to that. I have been meaning to make a video on it for a while, but it just, I really want to capture it, um, properly, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, but in the meantime, you should definitely check out Ezra's other zines too. And I believe most, if not all of them are available for free, which again, is just really special to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> here's another one. And this one is obviously a zine that was made just for me because <laughs> it has my name on the front, Wesley. And this was made by, uh, a new staff member at the library where I worked at to host this scene fest. Uh, and it's just like this really cute little thank you zine of like, um, just, just lovely things about the zine fest. And she made one of these for everybody who worked on the zine fest. And it's like, it's just so it's so sweet because it feels like I've made another, I've made another convert to, to zine making and to zine creating. And I am so happy to have Allie on the zine team and be like an advocate for zines within the library. And I really love it. So obviously this is just a very special one. And also I really like these waves because it reminds me, uh, these ones in particular just reminds me of when you have, you know, the, you, you, it's been run through the post office. And so it has like those waves uh, crossing out the stamp. So that one's really special. Not a lot to say on that one. Cause obviously it's very uh, me oriented. Okay. I'm trying to decide which one of these I want to show last. And I think we'll do the other one last. So we'll do this one first. This one <laughs> is the first zine that I, Okay. I have kind of a complicated thing with zines where I made a ton of zines in middle school and they were all collaborative, like, um, more like magazine type newspaper type zines. Like in hindsight, they definitely counted as zines, but it's not really what I thought of as a zine at the time. Uh, and so this is one of the first ones that I made that definitely felt like a zine and that definitely was to be shared with other people. And I made this for a class. I was taking a class and I don't even remember what it was called, but it was basically like a, you know, a history slash social studies class on the development of urban spaces, like the development of the city in America. And, uh, as part of our final project, we basically had to pick out a city in, um, in California, which is where my, uh, where I got my undergrad degree and make a presentation about an issue in that city and how we would address it. And so this was basically, uh, it was a, you know, group project. And the issue that we picked was the, um, gentrification basically of, uh, Sacramento and how a lot of the underground art scene and the punk music scene was being, uh, pushed out by developers and therefore taking away the very thing that made a lot of people want to move there, especially in the, uh, early two thousands. So anyway, I kind of went into that for a lot, but this whole thing was like part one part. It was like a little handout, um, of, you know, the issue that we were talking about, 
and so we talk about like a little bit of the history of punk, why it's important to Sacramento, what's happening to the Sacramento punk scene, the cost, uh, potential solutions, and so it's kind of, um, it's very boring. <laughs> I tried my best to make it interesting. Uh, we have like this little history of Casa de Chaos, which is sort of a punk venue that we had particularly focused on because it was, um, it had sort of just been closed at the time and this is why everyone was talking about it. Um, so I don't know. I like, I think it's interesting, but it's very academic and, <laughs> uh, I think in some ways making it very academic was what made it easier to share with other people because it felt like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be like a real zine. And this was before I really came to the conclusion that there's no such thing as a real zine or, or, or whatever. But you know, I, I was able to be a little bit more emotionally distanced from it. And I think that really helped me break into the idea of making zines to share with other people. And now here I am today making a shit ton of them. So I, I kind of hate this zine, but I have to keep a copy just just because. And I'm sure that, you know, many years from now when I have even more distance from when I made the scene, I will be happy to have kept it, so that's why I'm keeping it. <laughs> okay. By the way, I got an A on that project. <laughs> and the very last one that I have to show is, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just show it right now. Why I Like Zines by Nina, aka Zina, at Echo Zines, and this, so I love, for one, I love Nina, and um, have, you know, we're definitely zine friends, so that's part of why it's special. But I think part of also why this is special is because I, I have come across many, many zines in my time that are zines about zines, uh, and many of them are, are sort of basic zines about how to make a mini zine. I mean, the zines about how to make zines are almost always about how to make a mini zine, I've noticed. There's been lots about what is a zine, you know, zine 101, which is completely valuable, but it's also one of those things that once you've read one, you've kind of read them all. That's obviously not entirely true, but, you know, there's only so many different ways that you can say or deliver the same information, I guess it, it felt like. And, um, so, you know, I, I, and I've even had to make a couple of those, had to, I've even made a couple of those myself, myself for the sake of sharing with other, uh, people in particular contexts and, and, you know, I completely value <laughs> zines like this, but it's just never been especially interesting to me until I saw this one. And this is a free zine and I just printed it myself and it's available on Nina's resources page on her website. And basically... I really like this mini zine because I feel like it gets at the main point of like this zine expresses what zines are all about. And it's not just about, you know, a sort of textbook definition, not that there is one, but you know, a definition of a zine is like a folded piece of paper and you photocopy it yourself and it's, you can make anything about it. And it's like, like, I don't know. I just feel like no definition really captures what a zine actually is, and you can describe it, but it's sort of like if you say, you know, oh, collage is when you take a bunch of different uh, images and you you glue them on top of each other. And it's like, you know, for one, that's a really bad definition, <laughs> but also it's like, it doesn't tell you anything about the liberation and the freedom and the interest and like anything that would actually make someone excited to do collage. And so what I really like about this one is that this scene is that it, it really, I think it's really exciting. It may, it gets at the thing about zines that makes you want to make them and not just like, oh, okay, so that's what a zine is. Um, yeah. And it's, it captures the aesthetic and, uh, you know, the very punky aesthetic, but not too punky to be alienating. And it's like, it's, got color, but it looks really good if you don't print it in color too. And it just is like, if I had to recommend any zine that's like a zine about zines, 
to anybody that's not too intimidating, it's not too large, it's not too overwhelming, it's not too much text, but it really gets at the main point of zines, this is absolutely it. And I, I definitely am going to include this in like a zine 101 video that I'm currently working on, but um, I had to show it here too because it's a mini zine and it's just like a perfect little mini zine to talk about zines. So I'll just get some, mention some of the points here. Again, this is free from Nina's website. Uh, zines can be made by anyone. Yes, that includes you. You don't have to be a professional writer, artist, publisher, journalist to make your own zine. Zines are the perfect creative outlet. Zines are accessible. Zines amplify your voice. And zines build communities. So this is not just what a zine is, although there is like a very handy little definition. Zine, self-made and self-published nonprofit DIY magazine. Perfect. <laughs> That's all you need to know. And you're holding a zine, so you kind of have this as like a frame of reference. But this is like, this is the real point of zines. This is like, this is what we're fucking talking about. Oh man, I really, I really, I really like this and I really appreciate this and I'm so glad that I am never going to have to make another 101 zine again because I have the perfect one to give to people. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nina Zina, for making this. And of course, I'll have a link to this below so that you guys can have the perfect zine to give out to people. Yeah, so these are... You know, these are some of the mini zines that are just sort of especially sentimental and important to me. I have a lot others that I love and that I love for their content and and their meaning and that all that sort of thing, but just like just for the for the ones that I would, you know, the ones that are very special, the ones that are very sentimental to me. I've got these and I'm very happy to, you know, have the opportunity to show them a little bit more love, because uh, mini zines in my uh, boxes can sort of languish, I suppose. I've actually rearranged my boxes now, so the mini zines are at the front, and um, hopefully that means that I'll be able to give them all a little bit more love and read them, read them more often. Alrighty, so I hope that you have some great mini zines to read, and if you don't, then check out the description below and read these. I will talk to you later, and have a fabulous mini zine march. Bye.